Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I want to show you how to make this plaited wristlet clip. This is something you can add on to your crochet bags, your little pouches, even your clutch bags and it is a really great scrap busting project. It's simply made by working three strands of crochet and of course plaiting them together adding on this really useful swivel clip at the end and it's almost seamless. The yarn that I'm using in this video is three shades of paint box yarns, cotton DK. It's a size three yarn and it is 100% cotton and I'm going to be using a four millimeter crochet hook with it and as you can see I've used three colors. I've got stormy grey, paper, paper white, and this is my favourite pink, of course, which is Candy Floss Pink. And I'm going to be using all three in this little wristlet. You can, of course, work this in one colour. It's exactly the same way that you're going to make it. You just have a few less ends to weave in. Now for the swivel clip, you are going to need a D-ring to add on to your bag. You can either add a little tab on, just so it's got something to clip into. You can get smaller D-rings than this. This is just the size that this pack came with. I found this little box full of bag accessories on Amazon and it comes with a little pouch of swivel clips, D-rings and really usefully, something you can't often get hold of, are these buckles that don't really need to be clipped in. The weight of the fabric kind of pulls this bar down and stops it from slipping. I'm going to have to be creating a handle with one of these as well at some point. I'm going to pop a link in the description box below for this little pack that I bought. This was on Amazon UK, but I'll find the equivalent for you lovely US lot on the Amazon there for you. So gather all of your materials and let's get started. So the wristlet size that I am making measures about uh, 14 centimetres in length which is about 12, maybe 13 inches. It is lovely and long because I'd like to be able to hold it there. But if you want to make it shorter, you can just adjust the initial starting chain. We're not going to need our swivel clip till a little bit later. So I'm just going to place that over there and I'm going to grab my first colour, which is going to be... So the first colour that you use is going to be the colour of the tab you use to secure your swivel clip. So grab your first colour, or your colour if you're only using one, and we're simply making a slip knot and placing that onto our hook. I'm going to start by making a chain of 70. So we're just going to yarn over and bring the hook through the loop on our hook. I'm going to do that for a total of 70 times. Four, five. So our starting chain length, or mine, is about 37 centimetres. So if you imagine 37 centimetres, which is 14 and a half inches. If you make your starting chain too short, you'll lose too much length when you plait it. It doesn't lose an awful lot. And of course we can make our tab a bit longer if you need to, but don't go too long, don't go too short. I'm gonna be doing a chain of 70 on these. This was a chain of 80. If you want a longer strap, I'm making a slightly shorter one on this occasion. Once you have your chain length that you want, we are simply going to be working one US half double crochet into each chain across. It's entirely up to you if you want to work into that back loop. It's going to be a lot quicker if you don't. So we are going to start by yarning over our hook. We're going to skip our first chain, working into our second, just by inserting our hook, yarning over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. I'm going to repeat this all the way down back to where our starting chain was. So we are simply going to be working one US half double crochet into each chain across. So I've started with a chain of 70. I'm going to be making one half double crochet into each chain. 
should give me a stitch count of 69 at the end of this row. Continue all the way down back to your beginning slip knot and I'll meet you there. Once you've worked all the way back down to your slip knot, you should have 69 half double crochets and we're actually going to fasten off because we are finished with this colour for now. So I'm simply making a chain of one and then with my scissors just snipping off a length and using my hook to bring that all the way through and it just creates a secure knot for us. We're going to turn our work. We're going to reinsert our hook into the same stitch that we just fastened off and we're going to put our new colour, which for me is the paper white, over the hook with the tail at the back and then bring it through. From here, we're going to make our next chain of 70. So we just yarn over and pull through 70 times to create a chain of 70. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and 70. So we have the chains attached at that end. And from here, just like we did before, we're going to work into the second chain from hook Yarning over, ready to work, one half double crochet into each chain across, back down to where our first colour was. So we're going to end up with 69 half double crochets worked in our second colour. So continue to work all the way down. I'll meet you at your final chain so you're happy with where you're fastening off. And then we're going to repeat this again for our third colour. I'm just working my final two chains. And then of course we are ready to fasten off. So we just make a little chain one, grab our scissors and pull that through. And now we have, ignoring the ends, now we have two colours attached. Now these ends, remember, are not 100% secure, so you're very welcome where I've got these two tails next to each other here, where I joined the white. I am simply going to knot them together just to make that nice and secure. It wasn't, won't affect the end of the rows, but I just want to make sure, oops, just want to make sure they're not going to come undone. So now we still have our row ends here and we are ready to add on our third colour. So once again, I'm going to turn so that we have the wrong side facing and our stitches are in this direction. Simply going to insert my hook into that last stitch that we made and add on my final colour. Just placing the yarn over with the tail at the back and bringing it through. And then we are ready to work our next chain of 70 once again. And 70. So once you've made that final chain of 70, once again, we're yarning over, ready to work into that second chain from hook. working one half double crochet back into each chain across. We're working all the way back down and then once we have got to the bottom, we're gonna fasten off with this final color and continue on to make a tab to secure our swivel ring. I got ahead of myself and worked into that final one as well. So I've worked all the way back down and we now have these three beautiful tails. I'm going to fasten off my final colour by making that chain one and snipping off to pull that end through. And if I have it, I'm going to, before I go any further, I want to secure that pink to where I fastened off that white. So I've got those two strands. I'm going to make sure that pink is pulled all the way through. That's it. And then I'm just going to simply make a double knot here 
so that they're nice and tight as well. If I dangle all those ends out of the way for a moment. We, are, we have our three strands ready for plaiting, but we're not going to plait them just yet. We are going to create this little tab that needs to be as wide as our swivel clip. Now, as you can see, this is pretty this is a little bit wider than our swivel clip. So we're going to work a few rows of US single crochet across the top here that we can fold through rather than, yeah, it just looks a lot neater. So I'm going to start by turning and having the wrong side facing me. And yes, these ends are annoying. I know people hate it, but I'm going to work over them. Why am I going to weave them when I can work over them? They're already nice and secured. Every colour is knotted to another colour. So if I just make them all pretty like that, you can see that it's going to be fine. Going back to our beginning slip knot, which is just here, with that tail coming out of it. If I pull it away, you can see a little bit easier. I'm going to actually insert my hook into the stitch, kind of next to that slip knot. So you can see where the tail is. I'm just going to put my hook through there. To annoy you, I'm going to just place my ends over the top so that they're going to get woven in or worked over. And I'm grabbing the darkest colour, which is my grey, and I'm just placing that tail over the back once again, bringing my hook back through. So that I only have one strand. I'm going to make a little chain one, which again does not count. And this time we're going to be working across the top of our tails ready for plaiting. So we're going to work across this top here. Yes, mine looks really messy. I know. The first thing we need to do is to locate where we've just added in. I'm going to pull that one tight for a moment. Find my working yarn. And I'm going back in where I just joined that yarn and making a single crochet. We've worked one there and I'm going to work one into the next row end, yarning over, bringing it back through, and make another single crochet. Then gonna work into the ends of this white. So you can kind of work where you've joined the yarn. It's gonna be about there. Working a single crochet, and then I'm working into the bottom here of where the row end is and we've just inserted to work another single crochet so effectively we're working two single crochets per tie so then I'm going into the pink here working a single crochet and then we're working that final single crochet into that last stitch so now we have a row of single crochets working across the top of our strands to be plaited. And we're going to make a turning chain of one, turn our work and work another row of single crochets. So just by working back into each of those stitches across. Just sort that little tail out. There we go, that's a bit better. So one, two, three, four, there's number five. And there's number six. It's always worth at this point, just checking that your strap or this little bit of our strap is gonna be wide enough for our D-ring. So we want it to fit in and it does absolutely perfectly. Now we're going to do a total of six rows. So we've already done two. So we're going to make a turning chain of one and work one single crochet into each stitch across a further four times. So working four more rows and then I'm going to join you ready for the plaiting. We're not going to attach our 
swivel ring until we have made our plait because it's going to make it so much easier to secure our plait with our tab ready to go. So once you have worked those six rows, we're going to make a chain one and we're ready to fasten off. But this time we're going to fasten off with a long tail. I would say at least 12 to 16 inches long. I'm going to pull that all the way through and I'm going to take a moment just to weave in these ends and get them all secured. So once all of our ends are woven in, we are ready to start plaiting. We're simply going to be plaiting these three prongs together. Prongs, strands, I'm not sure what you call them. I bring the outside over and then bring them that one in. And once you've got it looking nice and even, I don't want that not to be seen at all. Big pink, there we are. Once you've got it started, I'm just making sure that everything remains flat when I bring it over. And just literally plaiting them as you would three strands of hair. Don't have to do it too tightly. I'm just making sure that those strands remain flat. And you get quite a nice variegated colour. I'm going to continue all the way down, plaiting this up. And then I'm going to meet you to secure these ends together. Once you have plaited all the way down, you can adjust the thickness and the looseness if you need to, just by kind of stretching it out a little bit. The plait won't completely come undone, don't worry. It just helps to loosen it a bit and give it a really nice even look. You may find that just the way plaiting works, some strands will be longer than others. Don't worry too much, as long as you can kind of hold them together for a moment or two because the final thing to do is to bury these ends and sew them in to the end of your handle. So I'm going to place them kind of midway at the bottom here. So we're going to secure these ends with folding over, but we need to add our swivel clip first. I'm just going to place it over in this direction. You need to make sure that once you've folded, you have the actual clip on the outside and then you can position your ends where you want them, making sure they are secure and the wristlet is not twisted. And when you fold over, we're going to use this long tail to sew through and secure those ends. Just going to make sure that they're nice and secure where I want them to be before I start seaming. Make sure they're tucked inside. And I'm going to start by just whip stitching over the edge, burying that pink. And then I'm just going to work my way backwards and forwards through both sides. So it's coming out of the grey on both sides. So where I've come out, I'm going to rotate, go back through. Again, just making sure that these ends are tucked in and you're coming back through the grey again. It's a little bit tricky to do on camera. I always say that, but it really is. I just want to make sure I'm getting these secured. And then this is the final one going all the way through. I'm going to whip stitch at the edge. So I'm just coming straight through and around the edge just to secure it and bind those together. Do that a couple of times. Just gives it a bit of extra strength. And 
and then I'm going to work all the way back across again, just for a final time, coming all the way backwards and forwards. If you can get your needle back through. I always say I'm never, I'm not a seamstress and I'm really not. I'm going to whip stitch once again on this edge just to make sure that that's all nice and secure. And then I just need to weave this final end in and we've created this really cute plaited wristlet. Just going to make a little knot twice, always do things, especially knots. And then I can use the actual bit that we've made here just to push the end all the way through. Ready to fasten that last end off. And that is our wristlet completed. I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and you've enjoyed making your very own plaited wristlet. And I will see you in the next video.